In this video, my coin shop owner discusses three reasons why you should buy this type of silver. How you doing everybody? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals. If you're new to the channel, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a guy talking about precious metals, so make sure you blast that subscribe button, get the bell notification clicked. That way you get updated with any new content. I recently did a poll asking everybody what should my coin shop owner Steve and I discuss next time I go there and an overwhelming majority of you said talk about junk silver, constitutional silver, 90% silver, whatever you want to call it. But this is it right here. Some examples, got some Morgan dollars and peace dollars. And the reasons that my coin shop owner goes over why you should be buying this silver, especially now, is very important for both the novice and seasoned stackers. So why don't we just jump right to the interview? We're on now. We're on. What's up? <laughs> Story. <laughs> How All right, doing? so we want to do some junk silver dabbling yeah. today. Yeah, the people have spoken. We haven't done any videos on this stuff. And, um, you know, people just, they want to know more about constitutional yeah. silver. They love it. So I guess you want to just tell the viewers, like, what constitutional silver is and right, the so varieties. constitutional silver would be the same thing as junk silver, pre-64, 90% silver. Um, 90, most of the time, it would be coins that are not really a numismatic type of coin, um, no, it's a super common, lots of them out there, um, and they, they just trade more as a bullion type of thing. So that's like a lot of people would want to stack that, and mm -hmm. some people mindset would be um, in a, like a total economic collapse type of situation. You know, it, it's small enough silver that it's easy to trade, right? Uh, and it doesn't carry a ton of big premium normally. Um, would you say that's one of like the big I would say selling points as a dealer? Yeah, that you know. It doesn't have, it's, it's inexpensive. And it's recognizable, right? Recognizable. So everybody kind of knows what a 50 cent piece is or a quarter is, whatever have you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's everyday stuff. We all handle it all the time. Uh, and they can just look at the date and they kind of know exactly what it is. So it's real easy to recognize as well. And how about the sound? Yeah, right. The right? sound is usually what everybody kind of picks up on right away. So these things in this little bin over here, I brought this yeah. out because these are all culls. Okay. So these are been mishandled. They got holes. Um, you can see they're slick. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Most of this stuff is going to trade for more of a silver value type of thing. It's going to be have a le little bit less premium. That's just a totally polished up piece. Polished, yep. You know, so it goes in the cull bin. This was definitely have good stuff. You have barbers, yep, yep. That was in a jewelry piece. So there's some there's some cool numismatic-ish pieces, but they're sure. they're below what you you'd want to be collecting. Right. Uh, um, I I've had a lot of different people say that quarters are better. People say dimes. Then you you actually, you hear debates of people talking about Roosevelt's being better than Merck dimes because of the silver content. And I, I did a video once where I, I weighed like 50 Roosevelt's and then 50 Mercury dimes and the Roosevelt's had more weight to they them. They will because they weren't traded, they yeah. were not handled as much. Normally the Mercury dimes in that time of our economy, um, there wasn't a lot of money in circulation. So what we had in circulation was used a lot. Right. So they got worn out a lot. So same thing with your standing Liberty quarters. They're typically fairly slick. Um, there's not a lot of weight, so a lot of the weight's gone. The best way to trade those, if you're gonna go to buy them, is buy the weight and not necessarily the face value. Okay. Um, a lot of dealers are not gonna do it that way. However, they're gonna, they're gonna try to sell it to face value because th there is a, they, that's one of them semi-numismatic type pieces. Right. Um, but when it comes to junk silver, it's just what is and what is not better is your half dollars are always going to trade for a higher value. They're always going to have a bit more premium than your quarters and dimes. Why? Um, that's a damn good question. I don't know. Is it? I think. <laughs> you know what I think it comes down to, if I were to guess, based on just what I've seen, is that um, I think people just like the designs better on, let's say, like the Walking Liberties, um, and people love the Benjis. Well, the Benz, and then to be honest with you, there's some people that love the 64s. Uh, or, 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 I'm sorry, yeah, the Kennedys. Kennedys, yeah. These are 90% silver Kennedys. Um, these, I'll be, I'll be honest, I sell probably as many or more of the 64 Kennedys than I do anything else. I, and you know, I think that is, is because they weren't handled as much. Sure. And you're going to get more weight yeah, per dollar. Yeah, I'd think the savvy stacker who's looking to get, um, you know, the most bang for their buck 
is to be doing, you know, this stuff that would have more silver content. And I think that's right. Like you were alluding to, we're not even alluding to, we were talking about before, is that you know, Roosevelt's and your JFK's uh, 90% silver, right? Uh, they just weren't circulated as much. So you're going to get a lot more meat on the bone, per se, per dollar face. I'm just um, taking out a variety here because some of the people that don't necessarily know, yeah, yeah, that you know, you've got the standing Liberty quarters here where you have Liberty that basically just standing there. And what's funny is uh, the seeded Liberty, I, <laughs> I thought it was like seeded as like a poppy seed or sesame seed, not as in like seeded like on her butt in a yeah, chair. Seated, yeah. <laughs> That's when I was like brand new to this. And then there you got a Mercury dime, um, which is very popular. Um, and then obviously you've got the George Washington quarters and, uh, what else you got? Oh, you and this is, I, this is kind of my everyday trading bin. So when somebody yeah. comes in here and wants to buy a couple dollars face of 90, I normally just grab this bin because I would normally fill the order. Right. I do have bags of like $50 face, um, that, I, that would for a larger quantity. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I'll sell a $50 bag of, uh, of 90% silver. Not that it's any better as far as a, a better deal. It mm -hmm. all trades for about the same. Um, but some people prefer to buy in a larger quantities. Um, what, what, let me ask you this. What do you think is better to stack in terms of, um, you know, people stashing their money away in precious metals? Do you think it's better for them to buy, you know, if you're talking like budget type stuff, um, you know, generic, you know, Buffalo rounds or the constitutional silver? That's probably a personal question in terms of where your mindset is. So are you stacking because you're trying to hedge the dollar? What's your reasoning behind it is what I'm getting at. Um, are you stacking because you're looking for the long-term investment? Um, you, you know, it kind of depends on where you're going. Are you thinking because one day, doomsday type of scenario, yeah. you're going to need to be able to trade in smaller quantities? Venezuela right now, uh, one ounce round would buy you food for six months. So that's a lot of, it would be a large sum for just one ounce. Mm -hmm. People are thinking about fractional. So if you're thinking along those lines, then yeah, the quarters and dimes is the way to go. Um, but if you're looking to, like for a long-term investment type of thing, personally, I like 90%. Um, I have some 90% stacked away for myself. I bought it cheap. I remember I was buying 90 at eight, well, like eight, eight to eight, one. Oh, yeah. my God. What's it now? Uh, 19, 20? 20, 20, 20. It, it normally trades for about 22 to 23 to one right now. My goodness. You know, I remember so. just a couple years ago, it was like 10 to one, 11 yeah. to one. And then it did that slow creep up, and so the thing to remember too is when dealers talk about ninety percent, there's a couple of weird anomalies about it, right? So it's still silver. Mm -hmm. and we think of it as stacking, but it's traded in dollars face value. So it takes a dollar forty of ninety percent silver to make one ounce of silver, right? So, but it's not traded that way. It's not traded by the ounce. It's traded by the face value. The other thing too is dealers trade 90 percent silver in bags of silver that's one thousand dollars face bags okay that's how it's traded in our community so a quarter bag would be 250 bucks half bag would be 500 dollars. that's how we think about silver as a dealer mm -hmm. just a couple of terms to throw out there because a lot of people get confused i get that asked that question asked of me all the time right so what do you so right now where silver is in terms of spot price uh, behind you, it says it's twenty four fifteen. Yeah, it broke that twenty four. It seems like it's holding it pretty well. I kind of like it. I'm I'm pretty bullish on it right now, and I have been really for this year. Yeah, a couple of surprising pullbacks, um, but I like what I see right now. It's trading really well. Um, you know, I, I think that you know we're we're on that upward trend again. Do you think people right now should buy constitutional or generic silver? I think you should buy what you can get what you can afford. Yeah. I'll be honest with you right now because yeah. you know I personally don't really like what they're doing with the economy. If you're asking my personal opinion, a lot of people don't. You know, yeah, a lot of folks are coming in here. You know, they're they're cashing out parts of the retirement fund to put it into the commodities. Yeah, you know, when you're hearing that on all different platforms, right? So whether it be the housing or commercial or whatever have you, they're putting it into commodities. They want physical assets. They don't want it in the in the market. Yeah, uh, understandably so. Um, hey, listen, I appreciate the uh, insight and um, everybody that's watching this, obviously, contact Steve, U.S. Coin Trust. I'll put the information in the description. Let him know Stormy sent you. And uh, you're looking good, dude. I keep Thanks, telling you. You're looking, it's you're coming. Looking it's nice. coming. We're, getting, we're, get, we're shedding off the pound slowly but surely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. So, I'll see you. Be good, man. So those are the three main reasons that my coin shop owner, Steve, says that you should be buying this constitutional silver. Are there any reasons why you are buying constitutional silver that we did not discuss in this interview? Definitely let us know in the comments down below. 
And I would like to quickly thank these elite channel supporters. And if you haven't already become a channel member, please check out the awesome perks and join today. With that, this is Empire Precious Metals. Until next time, long live the Empire.